But, but with that, we'll move across uh, to the other earnings that we've uh, had over the weekend. Godish Properties, fourth quarter numbers missed estimates. Uh, however, the stock is gaining after its book value saw growth of over 200% during the quarter. And the company also clocked sales worth nearly 1,000 crores for the fourth quarter in a row. Apura Chitnis caught up with Pirocha Godraj, the executive chairman of the company. Listen in to a class size slice of that conversation. There was some one-offs this quarter, both on the positive side where we had a, a, a stake sale in one of our commercial projects, um, which created a, a fair amount of other income. We also had some write-downs of some of the older commercial projects we're doing, which showed up in, in the expenses side, as you mentioned. But overall, I think it's been an outstanding quarter and financial year for the company. We've seen the scale of operations dramatically increase during the year, including a 150% increase in the value of real estate booked during the year. And what exactly is the reason for the other income to grow up as well? As I just mentioned, it's for the stake it's sale in the same. commercial it's project, it's yes. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, it's a project we're developing here in Vikroli called Godrich 2. It's about a 1.2 million square feet commercial office development. And during the quarter, we sold 50% stake in that development uh, to a fund management arm. Uh, recently, the Mumbai DP has been announced as well, and uh, there's a lot of emphasis on the affordable segment. So how aggressively would you be looking at it? You know, I think Godrich Properties is very much uh, looking to expand quite aggressively, both in affordable housing and the overall housing market. We think the Indian real estate uh, market is at its very nascent stages of growth and is likely to be a very high growth opportunity for really the next couple of decades. And our goal will be to capture as large a share of that market as we are able to. Our focus for the next few years is going to be primarily on the top four real estate markets in the country, which are Mumbai, NCR, Bangalore, and Pune. And we see extensive opportunities within those cities to do both affordable housing developments as well as mid-income and premium housing developments. So all of those areas will be key areas of focus for the company. And in your presentation, you mentioned that the real estate market is otherwise a little lackluster, but your sales have been growing for, you know, exceptionally for the last four quarters as well. What is the reason for that? Like, why is Godri sales going up? You know, I think we're, we're focused, obviously, a lot on, on delivering this kind of growth. Um, we've been taking a lot of initiatives over the last few years to add to the company's portfolio from a business development perspective. As some of those projects are getting launched, that is allowing us to scale up. But we've been saying for some time that the real estate industry is a highly fragmented one. As the number one listed player in India by value of real estate sold, we estimate our market share is still probably only around 1%. So that indicates the level of fragmentation in the market. That also indicates the opportunity for consumers consolidation that is present in the market. Um, and that really has been a key focus area for the company to make sure that within the cities that we're focusing on, that we enter as many new micro markets as we can, that we crash the timelines from when we enter a project to the time we're able to launch it. And I think some of those uh, efforts have, have borne fruit during the year. And how is the project uh, pipeline looking for the next year? You know, I think both the, the new project launch pipeline as well as the business development pipeline are looking probably the strongest they've ever looked. Um, I think one of the advantages of the real estate sector itself being so weak is that it does create additional opportunities for us on the business development side. And we're very focused during the financial year on capturing as much of the, the, those, or as many of those as we can. Financial year 18 was our best ever year for business development so far, but we certainly hope to make uh, sure that the financial year 2019 is even better. And from a launch perspective, we have over 10 new projects that we hope to launch during the financial year, and even larger number of new phases of existing projects that we hope to launch. So I think you know, both pipelines will be quite full. All right. And coming back to the DP plan, the, the new development zone have been opened as well. And most of the environmentalists say that you know, it is not very viable to uh, build projects on the salt plan line especially. What is your take on that? You know, I think you have to balance these two things, and I think the, the government has tried to do that. My understanding is that environmentally sensitive areas like mangroves have been maintained as, as zero development areas, which is important. Um, and, you know, we, we have here in Vikroli one of the largest private mangrove forests uh, in, in, in the city, and we've, we're very proud of the fact that that has been maintained over the last few years. But I think, you know, things like salt pan lands are, are really open lands that were, were, were kept for a use 
waste that is no longer needed, which was making salt. I mean, that's why these are, uh, you know, were, were present. Clearly, it doesn't make sense to just block these lands from development. My understanding is that most of these are not particularly environmentally sensitive areas, and I think um, there are trade-offs that have to be made between, um, you know, development and environmental conservation. I think the, the city should do everything possible to put environmental conservation at the very forefront of its agenda for development of the city, mm -hmm. but not do it in a manner that just becomes anti-development. Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes I think there are, um, you know, civil society members that, that take the arguments too far, and by that virtue end up being sort of anti-development per se. Mm -hmm. And, you know, any new areas that didn't have development uh, being developed is looked at negatively, and I don't really think that's the right way to approach it. Certainly any areas that are actually environmentally sensitive should be maintained and protected and prioritized, but for other areas, if we want the city to develop, if we want affordable housing to become a reality, if we want to change the situation where more than 50% of Mumbai residents live in slums, we will have to look at opening up land parcels that can be used more productively. We will have to look at encouraging uh, redevelopment, so I welcome the government's initiative initiatives uh, towards that end. That's Pirocha Gozish talking about the possibility of opening up land parcels in Mumbai. But uh, we're moving on to our special